Today, I want to present the RAM cell. RAM stands for Random Access Memory. That just means that you can go to any location in the memory and grab your data. You don't have to go in a particular sequence. So let's take a look at the basic six transistor static RAM cell. Now here I've shown two versions. The one at the right shows the inverter symbol and the one at the left shows the same circuit but all six transistors are drawn out. Now recall how this this cross-coupled inverter works. If I have a low voltage here, the top inverter will convert that low voltage to a high voltage and the bottom inverter will re reinforce that logic state. So this cross-coupled inverter can exist in two different states. So I've shown here two bit lines. I've labeled it BL and not BL. And I've shown a word line that I've labeled WL. These static RAM cells are arrayed together. And let me show you, let me scroll down here and show you how that's done. The white part of this drawing shows how these six transistor static RAM cells are arrayed together. Here I have four bit lines. I have bit line zero, not bit line zero, bit line one, not bit line one. And notice that I have four word lines. And each word line in this example accesses two memory cells. So let's scroll back up and take a look at how the six transistor static RAM cell operates. Let's presume that I want to do a write operation. And I want to put a one into this memory. So that means I want to force the bit line to a logic one level or to a, we also call it a high level. And the not bit line is always the opposite of the bit line so it'll be at a low level. Now let's presume that this cross coupled inverters had the opposite data. So I have a high voltage sitting here and a low voltage sitting here. And I want to force in the opposite conditions. So I'm going to drive this bit line with a very strong signal. And the bit line bar, I'll drive it low with a very strong signal. And then after doing that, I'm going to set the word line to a high voltage. And that will turn on the transistors that are connected to the bit lines. And so what will happen is that this transistor will try to overwrite the low voltage and this transistor will draw current from this PMOS out through this bit line and it'll force this output of the P channel low and it'll raise the, the voltage at the left side and it'll cause the memory cell to flip but there's some important conditions. This switch has to be strong enough or wide enough that it is capable of overriding the data in the, in the memory cell. So the switches connected to the bit lines have to be wide enough. And generally, the PMOS transistor is, is a weak transistor. It ha has a low mobility compared to the N-channel transistor. So you see the P-channel transistor won't be very good at holding the one level. So it's rather easily overwritten by the signal at the bit lines. So let's say that I've written my high voltage into this RAM cell. So this voltage over here is at a high level. This is at a 
low level. Let me erase this old data here. Let me erase that high. Let me erase this low signal. And now let's presume that I've written this cell. And now I want to read my data. So to read my data, I'm going to have to set the word line at a high level. But one important thing is that when I do that, I want to put a high voltage out on this bit line and a low voltage out on this bit line. But let's say that from a previous cell, it did a, it did a read operation and perhaps it put a, a zero on this bit line and a high voltage or one over on this other bit line. And since there are many bit lines that are shared with other memory cells, there's perhaps quite a bit of capacitance on each of these bit lines. And recall that a capacitor will resist change in voltage. So when I enable my word line to be high, there's a danger that the bit lines are gonna flip the cell when I don't want the cell to be flipped that the bit lines could actually do a write operation when I want to perform a read operation. So the way around that problem is to set the bit lines at a high voltage before I do my read operation. So typically what's done is there'll be a pre-charge transistor connected to each bit line. And what I'll do is I'll enable this transistor to be on, this transistor to be on, and set my bit line and my not bit line to a high level. And so that avoids the false write when I want to do a read. And in that situation, my low voltage on this memory cell, or actually the this inverter will discharge the bit line. So when I enable my word line, I put a logic high on my word line, these bit lines will start to, well, one will start to discharge, the other will, will start to, it'll try and charge, but the P channel is rather weak. And if I've charged these bit lines to a higher enough level, the one will just stay at the one level. If I look at voltage versus time, one bit line will stay high and the other will slowly discharge. When it'll discharge through this inverter, and this inverter will try and reinforce, reinforce the one. So no, typically what would be done is I would have a, a sensing circuit that would amplify the signal at the bit line. So it would take this differential signal at the bit line and it would amplify it to a large voltage at the output. So it might take a millivolt signal level at the bit lines or, or millivolts or hundreds of millivolts and amplify it into volts or a very strong signal at the output. So when I raise the word line, the memory cell can discharge the pre-charged lines. This amplifier circuit will build up the signal to a level that's either a one or a logic zero. So let's take a look at the memory array and discuss how that works. So here is my memory array again. And notice that each word line drives two memory cells. And I have four word lines. So this memory is four words times two bits per word. And two times four is eight. So I have eight different 
memory bits. Now the pre-charged circuit is shown in green. And recall that prior to doing a read operation, I want to set all my bit lines high. So I'm going to give the pre-charge a small pulse. And then when this pulse goes low, I'm going to perform my read operation. So in reality, I'd, I may want to feed this pre-charge signal into this decoder block to turn off my NOR gates during pre-charge so I don't do a false write in, into the memory. So this is just a very simple version, a simple incomplete version of how the memory RAM cells are put together to form a RAM. The part shown in yellow is a decoder circuit. And what that does is it selects one word line to go to a high level and only one word line is allowed to go to a high level at a time so we don't get conflicts of data. So this particular decoder has two address inputs as A0 and A1. And those two bits of address information give me four different combinations. So for example, word line zero is selected when both A0 and A1 are at a logic zero level. Word line three is selected when A0 and A1 are both at a logic one level, and so on for word line one and word line two. So during a, a write operation, I'll place the information to write into the memory at data zero and data one. And the write signals will force the bit lines to the appropriate voltage so I can select my word line and write the information into the cell. Now during a read operation, prior to the read, I'll do a pre-charge. I will access a word line after the pre-charge goes away. And the read circuit will sense the data at the bit lines and will amplify it to a, a logic one or a logic zero at the data zero and data one outputs. So there are some important timing considerations for this RAM. The top waveform shows the address input. And my address is allowed to change at this time here. And when my address changes, I, I'm then accessing, I'm reading my data, for example, during a read cycle. And my data could come out at this time or a little later time for example, this could be a worst case process. The temperature might be hot. Maybe my supply is at a low level. And the, the data could take longer to time, take a longer time to become valid. And the time that I must wait for my data to become valid after applying the address is called the access time. Another important time is the cycle time. The cycle time tells me how often I can change my address or at what is the maximum rate at which I can change the address and grab a new chunk of data. Now we talked about the static RAM cell. I should at least mention that there's also another memory cell that's much simpler. It's called the dynamic RAM cell. This basically one transistor and one capacitor. And what this cell does is it writes data onto the capacitor, either a logic one or a logic zero during the write operation. And during the read operation, it places the data from the capacitor onto the bit line. And that goes to read circuitry and eventually out to my data output. 
Now this is very simplified and, and the dynamic RAM operation may have dummy lines to, to balance things and much more complicated than shown here. But this hopefully will give you some idea of the dynamic RAM cell and some idea of the static RAM cell.